service around it. And it seemed to me if we could carry on that vision of being sisters and brothers together, um, that it would be a, a better world for all of us. And hopefully in this sharing your time during this conference. Speaker um, is a man who has served as a driving spiritual force in the city of Chicago. Um, under his leadership, uh, the 150th birthday anniversary of Swami Vivekananda um, was uh, uh, celebrated in the city of Chicago. In, 20, in September of 2014, he was invited by the ambassador of India in the U.S. to meet with the visiting prime minister, Narendra Modi, for a special dinner. Um, he has been in, instrumental in, in working with the Vivekananda Vedanta Center in Chicago. Um, increasing the facilities there, um, creating a guest house and a 300 seating capacity multi-purpose auditorium. Um, many of you may know who I am talking about. Um, he, we'd like to ask Swami Ishat Mananda, Minister of the Vivekananda Center of Chicago to please take the stage or feel free to speak from the mic there. Please give him a grand welcome. Sadalina Rama Krishna Samakaya Yudharma Sapanarato Bidesham Tam Namamyam Bidesham Tam Namamyam It's my honor to the unity of the people in the world. Uh, religion is based on belief, belief in the highest possible values. And we will now release the volumes, the ten volumes, as a culmination of the five conferences that we alternate here. And it's coming to, you know, we came with the culmination of conferences in the form of volumes. Many authors who have contributed, like Professor Pritam Sarma, Professor Ram Nath Narayan Swami from Ayan Bangalore, Professor Shiv Tripathi, and many other, Dr. Dennis Sitchin, Professor Ram Ramanan, all are here. So, before I request Dr. Asuf Saeed, we'll go in the flow, and before I request him, Lecture, Chairman Foundation, to Andrew Spenny. We are releasing the compendium on integrating spirituality and organizational leadership, the 10 volume compendium, which brings a culmination of the papers presented in various conferences, including this conference. I request Dr. Asuf Saeed to address the gathering. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. At the outset, let me express my warm greetings and best wishes for the success of ISOL 2015, the 15 the Fifth International Conference organized by the America. Let the spirit and God of the Institute of Chicago once again include the words of Swami Ji. Vidabha Krishna, after practicing Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam, boldly declared that all paths lead to the same goal. Please get to the back slide. And he was the one who emphasized on universal religion based on the synthesis of sectarian belief with spirituality at its core. Swami Vivekananda, the living embodiment of Sri Ramakrishna's vision, he comes to US.
preach your monoism, tolerance, and universal brotherhood. Einstein Foundation is inspired by the philosophy of Sri Ramakrishna, of his universal religion and harmony of religion, and Swami Vivekananda, who was the first spiritual leader to take moral and ethical values to industries. We focus on two core themes, spirit center CSR activities and ethical business practices. The foundation has adopted this key theme as its driving force and is focusing on spreading this message through series of international conferences in India and now in Chicago. Ever since its inception in 2007, Integrating Spirituality and Organizational Leadership Foundation has been endeavoring to promote spirituality-based leadership and harmony to develop winning minds for gaining purpose-driven and principled managerial practices in organizations. We had our first conference with, we started along with School of Global Leadership, Regent University, Bruce Winston was there when I organized in Delhi. That is how we started our journey. The second international conference was held in Pondicherry, two events back to back. We had uh, many distinguished speakers came. It was in the land of Sri Aurobindo. The third was held at Bhopeshwar, which is Puri, was Jagannath Puri, close to that. And then we had in Haridwar. Next, please. This is where we have four in the Bhubaneswar. To promote spirituality in research and practice, we already had two research awards which we instituted. One was ISO Research Award, and another was ISO Spirit and Entrepreneurship Award. And I admire her for her courage and for her extraordinary enthusiasm for making this impossible task possible. Some of the more conservative people saw the parliament as a platform to demonstrate the triumph of Christianity, fulfilling the biblical prophecy that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Reverend Burroughs offered a cordial interfaith welcome to all. But as the mythologist Joseph Campbell writes, the dominant impression conveyed was that 
You can worship God in your way, and we will worship God in God's way. Now, let me make this point. This is the central point about Vivekananda's impact on the parliament. This, very likely, would have been the major impression that the parliament left on the world had it not been for the one who became the star of that event, namely Swami Vivekananda. Surely he was the right person in the right place at the right time. He was this charming, brilliant son of wealthy parents in Calcutta. He received, as has been mentioned here, the finest education in arts and sciences in both East and West. And he was always interested and attracted both to spirituality and social action. At one point, he joined the social reform movement. And while that satisfied his activist tendencies, it did very little for his spiritual needs. I'm going to depart here because uh, Sunita has just brilliantly talked about his relationship to Ramakrishna, which of course is so fundamental. And what a ama an amazing uh, confluence of coincidences this was, or strategy, or miracle, to bring together a visionary guru together with a person with all the equipment to interpret that vision to the modern world. Ramakrishna and Vivekananda formed a team, uh, a companionship, uh, that uh, is just remarkable to, to which we are all in debt. Well, Vivekananda became the devoted follower in the master-disciple relationship. As has been mentioned, he became the leader of the order in 1886 when uh, uh, when Ramakrishna died, and then he set off on this uh, um, immersion into India, all of its glories and its grinding poverty, and it was in that context, in deep devotion, as I understand it, that he heard his true calling to raise up the impoverished masses of India by making the dominant spiritual powers known. Now, first, the speaker, I request Dr. Craig Pearson, from everyone to speak on supreme awakening experiences of enlightenment throughout time and how you can cultivate them after the wonderful session on meditation. We move ahead with this. Before I request Dr. Ted Pearson to speak, I would like to share two moments. One, when Dr. Anil Maheshwari came to one of my conferences which I organized at IIG Rupi in Delhi and he gifted me the book Supreme Awakening. The book itself was a you know, priceless gift. The second moment came when I met Dr. Pierre Pearson at Emmanuel and we had a long spiritual divine conversation being blessed moment after moment when we were discussing, we were talking and Dr. Craig Pearson didn't ask about anything professional. He said, I want to know your story. And that was And Mr. Lee for those wonderful observations. And I want to thank also Professor Marian Swami um, for Radio really Open Events. Thank you so much. Um, today I would like to speak for a few moments about, about a study that came out of collaboration with us. My formal training is in history, languages, philosophy, and theology. And you might ask the question, what in the world does a person with those qualifications do in the business school? And <laughs> the leadership school. And uh, <clears throat> part of the effort of our university is specifically to think once again about the deeper meaning of business and leadership. And um, years and years and years ago, uh, this student was in a meeting that I had my first year PhD students. And as I always do, I ask this question Why do you want to study leadership? Why do you want to lead? And I had a very brave student put up his hand 
and informed me that I was a student culture. I thought a student life is what I call situational intelligence. <laughs> I'm going to say this to the director, I'm going to grade your papers, right? And um, ultimately, I said, well, now that we see the life as a challenge, it's no longer a challenge then, and life becomes a mirror. Your inside becomes a reflection of outside. Your outside becomes a reflection of inside. The more you nurture your inside world, change the world inside, the outside world changes. It is as simple as that. Spiritual empowerment. Well, to begin with, um, to set the stage where of this uh, very a noble uh, conference that has been planned by ISOL. I have been part of a few conferences that ISOL has organized and I have always marveled at the way this has finally gone across. Initially we all felt, oh my god, how is it going? And then finally when I have come to present I found this August gathering all the four conferences that I have attended before. Well, to begin with, to background and an interesting intersection of backgrounds where um, her father was very much of a communist and socialist uh, perspective and her mother was very much of a religious and spiritual perspective. And so through this combination, which some of us think is a little bit odd to come to, one voice came from that. And that voice was, we are here not for ourselves, but we are here for others. And so while we have gifts that are given to us, we have to think about the gifts that we can give to others and helping others to see their own gifts. So um, similar to the, the social enterprise that was developed in, in India, um, Karo began to work with women who, who had handicraft skills and helped them through the use of multimedia, through the use of online services, to develop um, their own and uh, the question of the choice for ourselves. Uh, and my job is about leadership, technology, and business leadership, and so on, and leadership, and so on, 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 you know, we talk about, uh, you know, triple bottom line, quadruple bottom line. What happens in these lines of life? We choose what we choose. So I think we need to come on some level to close this way. Truth is one, but how it's expressed and how we can use of it, it depends on us. <coughs> so it's just a little bit of the human mind, you know, that comes to express us in many ways. In social domain, technical domain, economic and moral. What is leadership? As I see leadership, it is from a perspective of moral. It might be a secular one, it might be a cultural one, or it might be something else as well. Kind of a really a few words, few definitions of spirituality, and the key words that I found in, uh, in the definitions, like transcendence, which was a really appealing word, and which brought spirituality to its steam. There was something else, which was like, uh, there was a scholar who described it as a spirituality. Into the next stage of social evolution, using science and technology and instruments for the better interconnectedness among the people of the world. Alternatives are required only at the functional and procedural level of globalization. Present paper is an attempt to make a cultural framework for globalization as an alternative for its present form in the light of living the This planet Earth.
Spirituality is one percent theory and ninety-nine percent practice of meditation. Would you, would you, I, I asked this gentleman to pass out something to you all that I'll mention in just a few moments. My thesis is that we on planet Earth, we citizens of planet Earth, need to integrate the spiritual. social screens and saying we're, we're not going to invest in money, our money in companies that build weapons that kill people or do animal testing or whatever it might be. Well, that roughly four to five billion dollars in 1984, by the end of 2012, was 3.2 trillion dollars in the United States within the publicly traded markets. Between the end of 2012 and the end of 2014, that 3.2 trillion grew to 6.4 trillion out of roughly an 18 to 20 trillion dollar marketplace in the United States. So I would say that. My topic is some safe scientific wisdom. And uh, this is very, very important. Uh, the whole world has neglected the wisdom of the sage scientists, not knowing that there is science hidden uh, in this. They thought it was very religious thing. So now, I am going to a dimension. The Vedic Foundations of Indian Management and the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. We have come together to organize an international conference at the Indian Institute of Management in Bangalore between 4th to 6th January uh, 2016 on the theme of indigenous models of sustainability, good governance, and spiritual transformation. All of you who are present here are warmly invited to present papers and act and aid us in, it, in whatever capacity uh, you wish. It will last three days. Um, we, we're going to start on the evening of 3rd January where it will be inaugurated by a spiritual master to be started with bhajan, satsangs and darshan. And we'll have three masters coming in on all the three days, several tracks, and we've already uh, received a very encouraging response from different parts of the world. So you're most warmly invited to attend. Please do come back. It will be commercial real estate in Washington, D.C. But even with my own the buildings, I quickly found out that clean air was not enough to make a meaningful impact 
on people and enlivens their inner core, their consciousness, the one thing that could help someone succeed and excel. On the practical side of things, because employees are the largest cost of operating any business, broadening the notion in my industry of a deeper, of a more fundamental commitment to sustainability, raising people's quality of life, makes good business sense. We therefore need to go beyond just building a green. The concept of shelter, as defined by Maharshi Mahesh Yogi, was pure revelation. In his revival of the most ancient system of architecture and planning called Sapatya or Maharshi Vasudev, he defined perfection through the process called education. Now, we all have very high degrees. We have gone to colleges, universities. We have taught and we have written books also. But all that education is a different type of education. The education we are talking about is the education of the inner science. And if you look at our current education, it totally misfit towards the need of the society, which has totally changed over the last hundred years or so. But since centuries, what we are doing is, we are using an education model, which is an industrial model, which is batch processing and forcing people to go through certain kinds of learning and imparting instructions, which is again, in today's world, we have to draw. ...in corporate uh, society recently is, everyone's really focused on EBITDA. So it's a financial goal driven system. And how do we really change that? Supply chain is a terminology that's thrown around a lot, but we all really participate that. It's growing in today's corporation. It's how we plan and move goods and services, not just regionally, but locally and internationally. How do we do that better? What options exist? And what can or can't we do? Uh, other areas that corporations are really looking at or supply chains are looking at, you're looking at total cost of ownership. It's beyond just the price now of a single item. When we look at the total cost of ownership, we really need to add in how sustainable is, is the supply chain. Um, is it wasteful? How do we improve on it? Looking at total cost of ownership also drives and can help corporates, corporations that need it done. If you start changing and thinking differently, this can impact in the uh, financially advantageous to corporations who will then support this in growth in the I think that the sustainable uh, development which and then the whole concept of uh, governmental and non-governmental organizations is really being effectively addressed by corporations. Uh, corporations are, are not just the instruments of the evil uh, profit grabbing, but are an instrument for uh, transforming the world effectively using managerial talent and, and technology. And uh, in the area of supply chain, the might is just I think that uh, Walmart is having a global impact by establishing a system of transparency on the environmental impact of all the It's wonderful, and the Constitution does not <laughs> it does not abolish private enterprise, but it, uh, I call it um, spiritually informed planetary social democracy, right? And the word social there means that just exactly what... USA Standing Committee. And we look forward to her continued support, which she very, very really provides. Now, please. First of all, my name is everyone. I was not the one who deserved to be here. I can tell you think of this, the moment, the time, the date, in the year. 
Your presence here has been transforming for me. In ways, in some special ways, and you could recognize them as being community, offering their prayers, and some children performing. And uh, the Dalai Lama is always a funny man. The last time I met, he put my hand under his arm so tightly. I really felt that my circulation in my hand is going down. Beautiful person. He uses few words, but a whole lot of love. And this is a, uh, a church being built in Barcelona for probably 300 years. And music night took place uh, at the seat of that. And uh, she came with their souls, but they conquered Barcelona through love. There were about 10,000 people that were serving uh, every lunchtime. And uh, some drummers from Japan, and this in, in Melbourne, some modern music and some indigenous music uh, was fused together. And they built this uh, monks, this uh, temple through sand, and they close it. So, the fundamental of the world's religion, I hope. Celebration for this is called for. Let us begin. Give a big clap to Dr. Sunita Ji. Thank you very much for making it happen. Upper wala to hai, par to niche wala karna hai na. So, everybody should listen to everybody. And why do you listen? This is always something that you learn from others. So, meeting everybody, listening to everybody, that is the definition of each one. If you refuse to meet anybody, and if you refuse to listen, if you don't want to listen, and Who's prayers and blessings were involved in this? 